I'm going to do a quick walkthrough of Lesson 3, Assignment 2, where we're correcting the color and density of images in Photoshop. Uh, you should have downloaded this image, L3-A2 Correcting Images. You can just double-click that or open it in Photoshop. You should see all the layers. Be sure your layers panel is open. You should see all six layers. Um, First thing you're going to do, and all the things are listed in Blackboard, but I'm going to walk through them. Uh, you need to toggle off the visibility. You use this eyeball icon on the left. Uh, it will show or hide layers in Photoshop. Uh, so again, we'll toggle that off. We'll move to Layer 5, and we'll just work through all of these adjustments uh, using various tools in Photoshop. Uh, so for Layer 5, we're going to use a Levels Adjustment Layer. Again, adjustment layers only affect the pixels. They don't change the pixels. So here at the bottom of the Layers panel, we're going to click a Levels Adjustment Layer. And so that we don't affect anything except the upper left-hand image, we're going to click this icon right here, which will toggle the uh, effect to be a clipping of just this layer okay so as you see if you look at the layers you'll see this little arrow down that means it's only affecting the layer below it so i'm going to double click go back into the uh, levels uh, levels is a very easy thing to use i use it all the time uh, you just pick the white eyedropper find a white spot which maybe is uh, dad's shirt right here and then we'll click the black eyedropper and we'll click something that's black like the shadow under his coat and all of a sudden his image the image looks very much like it probably did when it was first taken again uh, these don't change the pixels below them they just affect them so uh, you can change the opacity of it, things like that. Uh, but for this, we'll set it at 100%. Uh, next, we'll move to layer four, and we'll do the same thing. We're going to do an adjustment on layer four of brightness and contrast, because this is a very underexposed image. So we're going to use the uh, adjustment layer of brightness and contrast. And again, we're going to only affect the layer that we're on. Then we're going to open up the brightness and we're going to decrease the contrast so that there's some detail in that shadow area. Okay, that looks pretty good. Again, uh, you can toggle that on and off to see what it, what it looked like before and after. Now layer 3, we're not going to use an adjustment layer. We're actually going to affect and change the pixels that are on this layer. So you won't be able to toggle on and off you'll just be able to see what you've done if you want to go back you'll have to use command or control z and walk back to get back uh, before you've made the correction if you need to redo it so layer three you're going to correct the visibility uh, of the green color shift and the kind of low contrast of this image by using some auto uh, color corrections in photoshop so you're going to go up to Image, Auto Tone, which corrects the density. We get some good blacks and whites. And then we're going to do Image, Auto Color. And it's going to change that uh, green hue. Take that away from here. So again, I can't toggle that off and on because I actually affected the pixels. Now here on Layer 2, we're going to use two things. We're going to make this back into a vintage looking image from this faded uh, very dull low contrast image so the first thing we need to do is just to do some auto contrast we're going to run image auto contrast which immediately brings back the blacks and the whites you could do image auto tone or image auto color although there's not any color doesn't really change anything uh, and then you're going to use an adjustment layer of a photo filter to make this look like a vintage image. You're going to choose the filter of a sepia, 
like a sepia tone image, like if you went to Silver Dollar City and had your uh, photo taken with uh, in a costume. So just bring that up to whatever you feel like makes that look like a vintage image. I want to say about 85%. I think you can just type it in. 85, I think that's what I tell you to use. Um, and again, you can see it that can be on or off. But now the, the physical changes to those pixels has already taken place. And then lastly, we want to fill in this background. It, it's blank or it's uh, transparent because you can see the, the checkerboard behind it. So for that, we're going to go up and uh, fill this layer with black. Uh, there are some ways to do that. One is to say edit, fill, and then choose black from the contents and say OK. Uh, you could also do, uh, because you have your colors, I have my colors set to black and white on the foreground and background, and if you don't, you can hit D and it'll default to black and white. Then in, if you're on layer one, if you use on a Windows, if you press Alt Backspace, it'll fill it with black. If you do Control Backspace, it'll fill it with the background color, which is white. Now on uh, on a Mac, it's uh, it's different. It's Control and then uh, Alt. So or command, not control. So just <laughs> it's a little confusing jumping between Windows and Mac. So there you go. You've got all these different uh, layers. Uh, it's added a quite a bit of uh, size to the image, but that's okay. Uh, now you're just going to save this off as the Photoshop document. So again, keep PSD. And then you're just going to type in the uh, kind of the convention that I, I showed there. Mike Brown. I'm going to put dash. Uh, you know, density. However, just something so I can identify it as the one. Or you could put the L3A2 uh, in there as well. Okay. And then you're just going to save it off again and upload that to me the photoshop document don't change it to a jpeg i want to be able to see all of your layers all right i'll be sure and reach out if you have any questions